Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Root of Power podcast. And I am so grateful for you being here and letting me live in your brain rent free for the next, I don't know, half an hour or so. And if you are a regular listener, I hope you understand how absolutely grateful I am for you. And if you are a first time listener, I hope you understand how absolutely grateful I am for you. Gratitude everywhere. Um, This podcast is something I started for funsies and as lead generation for my business. So we get to do both, which is very cool. And you all allow me to do that. Um, So hell yeah to you. Wherever you are on this journey, I am proud of you. And I hope you keep going. And I hope that you find people to join you on this journey. Um, And if you clicked on today's episode, which you clearly did because you're listening to it, I hope it resonates with you. Um, So self-sabotage is something that I talk a lot about with my clients. And there's a big, big, big misconception. And we're going to get into that as soon as I tell you about the wonderful freebie that I have for you. Now, we cannot know where we're going if we don't know who we are. If you don't know what you care about, what hills you want to die on, what you are going to wake up and choose violence for, then you have nothing to stand on. Um, You have nothing to stand in. So the goal for growing, for healing, for becoming your highest, most wonderful, badass self is that you have to know who you are. And if you are similar to many of my clients, you have probably spent a lot of your life being who other people want you to be. And that is a one-way ticket to exhaustion and burnout and resentment and basically hating everyone in your life and hating your life. So we don't want that for you, right? The entire goal of this podcast and my work is that you stand rooted in your own power. We cannot do that if we don't actually have roots. And you're like, okay, Amanda, how do I get roots? You have to know yourself. So I have a free exercise for you. It won't take super long. So if you're like, oh my God, I don't have time. Yes, you do. Yes, you do have time. And it is going to help you clarify your values. So that way, when we make decisions, we have a compass to go off of. Because if you're not super confident in your ability to make decisions yet, this will give you a framework. That's not other people's frameworks because other people's frameworks won't work for you. That's why I don't give you a framework. That's why I don't give you rules to say, here's how we make decisions other than do what is best for you. But that takes some knowledge to do that. So you can get it at livemyhappyhealth.com slash get clarity. And it is going to help you narrow down your value. So you can be like, okay, well, What do I care about? And then we're going to start walking towards those things. So as long as we keep walking towards what we care about, building a life that we love, then life is much easier. So go get it. LiveMyHappyHealth.com slash get clarity. And I also wanted to let you know, I am taking on -on one-on-one clients specifically for entrepreneurs and business coaching. Now, if you don't have a business yet, this is not for you. I am not going to take you from idea to implementation. That is not my strong suit. Where my strong suit is and where it may benefit you or a friend you know who owns their own business is in basically hurting the cats that entrepreneurs have in their brain all the time. The what about these? And there's just so many opportunities when you run your own business to do things and you can really get lost in the weeds and you're going to take so much information. It's basically like drinking from a fire hose. Oh, and also feral cats that you're trying to herd. So super fun. So the program is 12 weeks to, so three months to six months, depending on where you want to sit and you get to work with me personally. Um, 
every week we're going to meet. I will give you frameworks. I will give you systems. We will work on mindset. We're very heavy in mindset. So there is that. You can just shoot me an email or get me on Instagram at Amanda underscore chills on Instagram. Just DM me coaching, or you can send me an email, amanda.chills at gmail.com. And you can just coaching in the headline. Um, if you are interested, so eventually I'll get an application up on the website. So maybe by the time this airs, that'll be there. We'll find out. Okay. Now enough yammering. If you're still with me, bless you, bless your whole heart. Um, and let's dig into self-sabotage. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people, and I see it all the time in the industry where coaches are like, stop self-sabotaging, self-sabotage, self-sabotage. Why do I self-sabotage? Oh, I just self-sabotage. It's like a very cool buzzword, right? Kind of like how trauma is a cool buzzword right now. Everything is trauma. Are you alive? It's trauma. We had an episode about that come out in June, I think, like, are you alive? It's because you're traumatized. Do you like dogs? It's because of trauma. Do you drink water sometimes? Oh, trauma. Like self-sabotage is similar to that in people love to throw that word around without really understanding what it means and without really digging into why people would quote unquote self-sabotage. Now, as you can see by the title of this episode, I don't believe that self-sabotage exists at all. I do not believe that it is intentional that we ruin our own lives via self-sabotage. Now, you may be like, Amanda, I have definitely kept myself from happiness, from opportunities, from growth, from like, I have definitely ruined shit that could have been really good for me, to which I say, yes, I believe you. I'm not denying that that exists. What I'm saying is self-sabotage as an intention exists. I have never met anyone, and I have quite literally worked with hundreds of people. I have never met anyone who wakes up and says, I'm going to ruin my chances for happiness on purpose. Why? Because I like it. That is not fucking real. So Stay with me because I'm going to understand. I'm going to understand. I'm going to explain why self-sabotage doesn't exist. So when we think of traditional self-sabotage, you're like, well, I, um, I had a really good relationship and I ruined it because I was crazy or I was controlling or I was jealous or I couldn't get over my ex or I couldn't get over my trauma. Okay. That's not self-sabotage. Or, you know, I really, really wanted this new job and I, I just never applied because I didn't think I would get it. That is not self-sabotage. I um, keep using drugs instead of healing. That is not self-sabotage. The intention is not to make yourself miserable. I don't know anyone whose intention is to make themselves miserable. Now, here's where self-sabotage doesn't exist as an intention. It is a consequence of self-protection. I'm going to repeat that. Self-sabotage exists as a consequence of self-protection, as a consequence of not doing the work to heal. You see it all the time in business owners who say, I want a business, I want a business, I want a business, and they never pitch anything. I want a business, they never do the work. I want a business, and they don't do the mindset. They don't learn about finances. They don't learn about products. They don't learn about their customers. The end result is self-sabotage. So there's a few things that we need to understand here. One, your brain is going to do anything and everything it can to prove yourself right. So whatever beliefs you have, you are absolutely going to make come true. Now, how do I know this? Well, um, I study the brain for a living. Two, I've worked with hundreds of people. This has been true for all of them. If you believe that you're going to succeed, you're going to succeed. You may not hit your specific goal, but you are going to make progress. If you believe that you deserve a happy, healthy, supportive relationship, you're going to find that eventually because you're going to create it because you're not going to settle for less. If you believe that everything is figure outable, suddenly everything becomes figure outable. If you believe that life is good and people Most people at their core are good. You're going to find more good people. If you believe that you can do something, 
you're going to do it. Now, the opposite is also true. If you believe that everybody is a dirtbag and everybody's miserable and nobody's happy and happiness is for other people. And I had a client that believed that for a long time. You're going to prove that right. You are going to keep yourself from doing things that make you happy. You are going to keep yourself from doing the work that makes you happy. If you believe that all business people are sleazy, you're going to have a really hard time running a business. If you believe that sales are sleazy, you're going to have a really hard time making sales. If you believe that everybody's out to get you, you're going to manifest that. Like manifesting works both ways. If you have a victim mindset, everybody's out to get you. Nothing works out for you. Everything goes to shit, right? Everything you touch goes to shit. Then yeah, you're going to prove that right because you're going to make it come true because our brain hates to believe something that is not true. Kind of like flat earthers, right? People who believe the earth is flat, despite, you know, science, find evidence that matches their belief. That's called perception bias. The reason our brain will make everything come true that we believe is because it hates cognitive dissonance. We look to justify our beliefs. We look for evidence to justify our beliefs. You believe Trump is the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're going to find evidence for that. You believe he's Hitler, you're going to find evidence for that, especially in the age of the internet. You're going to find evidence on both sides. We will logically, naturally filter out information that doesn't fit our beliefs. Now, this is where self-protection becomes self-sabotage. If you believe that you will never have a happy relationship. You will ruin every relationship you ever get in. If you believe that people are cruel and they take advantage and they never have your best interest at heart and they're always strings, you're going to react as if that's true. You're going to find people in your life who make that true. When there are people across the whole spectrum, of course people do that. I'm not saying they don't, right? What I mean is people do that and many, many, many people don't, but you're not even keeping those people in your circle. If you believe that no matter what job you have, you just can't do it and it's too dramatic and you can't hack it and you'll never be happy. Well, you're damn sure never going to find a job that makes you happy. Because why? What is the point in trying if you don't believe it'll happen? Right? I see this all the time. (sighs) So, Self-protection is the actual intention. We protect ourselves from being wrong. We protect ourselves from failing. We protect ourselves from having to feel unpleasant emotions. We protect ourselves from growing. Now you may be like, Amanda, why the fuck would I protect myself from healing? I am miserable. I'm miserable. I hate my life. That's why I'm listening to your podcast because I want to change things. To which I say, go you for listening to this podcast and any other podcast that you like that encourages growth. Hell yeah. But your brain doesn't want you to grow because growing takes a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. It is much, much easier to maintain, right? It takes a lot more work to build a house than it does to maintain a house. And your brain's job is to help you spend as little energy as possible. And since growth is very energy intensive, your brain is like, "Uh, I don't want to do that. What if we like talk ourselves out of that 24 seven? Like, that's really what I would like to do. So your brain does right by self-protecting so hard that you end up self-sabotaging. And then it reconfirms that belief. If you if your belief is that you will never have a healthy relationship and you get into a relationship with someone who is healthy, who is balanced, who does support you, you will ruin it. It is only a matter of time before you ruin it. And then it confirms that belief. Well, it never works out for me. I can't, nobody can handle me. I'm too much. I'm a burden. You're proving yourself right because you're not willing to prove yourself wrong. It's okay to be wrong in the service of growth. It's okay to be wrong just to be wrong. Like it's okay. You don't have to know everything. Not all of your beliefs are true. I can't tell you how many people I have who think they're a burden, who think it's too late, who think it'll be too hard, who think they can't do it, right? Business clients and mental health who think their anxiety will never go away, who think they'll never escape depression, who (sighs) you're going to prove that right. 
if you don't get a handle on your beliefs, if we don't stop self-protecting so hard that we end up self-sabotaging. Okay, that is a problem. So how do we do it? Here's how we do it. One, you have to know yourself and you have to know what you actually want, which is one of the reasons that I talked about the values exercise in the beginning of this episode. If you don't know what you want, it's a little hard to walk towards. So like, for example, when I work with clients who struggle with substance use, it is always, 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 and I will die on this hill. It is always a self-protective behavior. Nobody likes the consequences of being addicted to something. And if you think that, get the fuck off this podcast. Like, we are all one traumatic event away from an addiction. So I need you to understand that. And I need you to understand why I'm giving this example. The goal is to protect from trauma. The goal is to protect from the absolutely overwhelming, unpleasant, hard to sit through feelings that come with trauma. So they find something that works very well, i.e. substances, to shut it down. The thing about substances is it works really fucking well. So the goal is to protect from pain. It ends up ruining their lives. But no one loves the process of ruining their lives. I don't know anyone who has an active addiction who's like, I love the feeling of shame that I have. I love stealing from my family and my friends. I love that I don't have safe, stable housing. I love that I lost my kids. I love that I lost my friends. I love that I lost my relationships. That doesn't exist. But what they're doing is self-protecting so hard that they end up ruining because growth is hard and it takes a lot of work. But if we don't anchor the reason that we're changing to ourselves, to our goals, to our values, then we have nothing to guide us, right? Like you can't just be a ship adrift in the ocean and expect to get anywhere. You're just going to get wrecked, like quite literally. So we need to know what we value. And these, you know, you don't have to have like the picture perfect, super, 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 super detailed life. Although if you do, even better. But we can start with things like I value honesty or I value kindness or I value God or I value fun or I value adventure. Like the values exercise is going to help you do this. So live my happy health.com slash get clarity. Go take it. It will help you. So we have to know ourselves and what we truly want. That way we have standards. So then we can say, okay, this is not going to meet my standards. So I'm not going to do it. Like if you have a certain client that you want to work with, then we're not accepting clients outside of that. I refuse to work with assholes or people who don't take accountability. I'm not doing it. It's literally not worth my time. I don't care how much they're going to pay me. It's almost like, hey, Amanda, I'm going to pay you a million dollars to work with me for one month, but I'm going to dodge you. I'm not going to do any work. I'm barely going to show up and you're going to have to chase me down. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care. It's not worth it. So if you want certain characteristics in a relationship, but you're accepting any bozo fuck boy off the street, like... Listen, friend, I hate to tell you, but that's you. Fuck boy, fuck girl. I don't know what the equivalent is for women. Should he? I don't know. But that's on you. You accept those things. You ruin your chances of happiness and success. You lower your standards. That's not on anybody else. Oh, that's all there is. That's a lie. Okay. You're proving that belief right by only allowing bozos. So if your standard is not bozos, We need to hold that standard, which is why what we value matters. So number one, know yourself, what you actually want and what you give many dams about. Number two, and here's a sticky one. This one may be difficult for you. You have to know what you're afraid of and how your behaviors are protecting you in the substance use case, right? They're afraid of pain. They're afraid of experiencing pain. And the shame and the guilt and the accountability that it takes to heal. But the cost of avoiding those is literally ruining their lives. 
So if you're struggling to make sales, are you avoiding being seen? Are you avoiding feeling judged? Are you avoiding feeling like you look stupid? It doesn't mean you actually look stupid. You just feel like you look stupid. So what feelings are we avoiding? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid that people are going to say about you or think about you or do if you start changing on this path? Maybe you're afraid of happiness, right? I can't tell you how many people I work with who are actually afraid to succeed. And I want you to think on that for a minute. And I really want you to think about why would I be afraid to succeed? Why would I be afraid of happiness? And I'll tell you that perhaps you're afraid of happiness. You're afraid of making it because once you achieve it, it, you can lose it. It can be taken away. But if we never have it, somehow we convince ourselves that that's better. It's not better. It's not better to live your whole life refusing to be in the space that you know that you want to be in just in case you lose it, just in case you fall short and you can't deal with those emotions or you think you can't deal with those emotions. You quite literally can. You feel like you can't, but you're going to prove that belief, right? If we never test the theory, our beliefs are just a theory. So what are you afraid of? What are you protecting yourself from? And how can we have compassion for ourselves for trying our best to protect ourselves instead of beating ourselves up? right? If beating yourself up work worked, you'd be perfect by now, but it doesn't work. It just makes you feel like shit. So maybe we stop doing that as well. Number three, we're going to take aligned action despite the fear. This is really what people talk about when they talk about manifesting. If you've heard that term. So if you're like, If you've been in any of like the coaching or wellness space and they're like, manifest your deepest desires, just think about them for five minutes every day and they'll come true. They're on their way to you. Just receive them with open hands. Like, listen, my darling, you cannot manifest something without working for it. Anyone who tells you that is selling you a lie. Okay, you have to actually do the work, which means you have to confront your fears. You have to move with your fears. You don't have to move past them. Just allow them to come along because as you grow, as you do the work, as you gain confidence, as you build your skills, those fears are going to go away, right? You become confident in playing the piano, in running a business, in having a good relationship, in skydiving, in walking, in building furniture by actually doing those things. Now, the sticky part is that you're going to be afraid of looking dumb, of being judged, of failing, of being bad, whatever. You're going to be afraid of many things, which is one of the reasons entrepreneurship is the biggest self-development you can do. Why relationships are some of the biggest self-developments you can be, do while stretching yourself is such a worthwhile goal because it forces you to come to terms and to accept and to move with and move past everything you're afraid of. You can do it. You can do it. You're not literally going to die from fear. You'll be fine. I know that. You have to tell yourself that until you believe it. That's how something becomes a belief. We just repeat something. So you have to take aligned action. What do I mean by aligned action? I mean, if this is your goal, we take the steps towards that goal. If your goal is a happy, healthy relationship, we're not accepting bozos. If your goal is to have a business that makes sales, well, we got to sell stuff. If your goal is to build a house, we have to find a contractor or start building a house. Like You have to take action that is aligned with those goals. And I really want you to ask yourself, what if it does work out? What if you get everything that you dream of? What if it's even better than you imagine? Shit, then what? (laughs) Well, then you could lose it, right? Things may not work out. But isn't it better to have loved and lost than never loved at all? Isn't it better to know that you can run a successful business 
because if you do it once, you can do it again. Isn't it better to live in your dream house for a certain amount of time than to literally always hate the house that you live in? Like, that makes no sense. That makes no sense other than you're afraid and you're giving into that fear because you don't know how to allow yourself to hold space for fear. You can move despite being afraid. You can move your muscles despite not thinking that you can do it. They're not related. So just because you don't think you can do something doesn't mean you can't literally do the actions. Your mindset is going to hold you back, right? If you think you can't pick up a pencil, that doesn't stop you from literally picking up a pencil. So I want you to think about while we're taking aligned action, what if it does work out? What would that look like? What would that feel like? What are you going to do when? Not if, when. When it works out, what are you going to do? Who are you going to call? How are you going to celebrate? A lot of the times we focus on what if it doesn't work out? What if this happens? Like, yeah, great, right? We want contingency plans. This isn't like rainbow butterfly la la land. We do want to be realistic about chances and what happens if things don't work out and have contingency plans, but we don't want to only focus on contingency plans. Like decide that it's going to work out. Decide that your happiness is not worth protecting yourself from. And let's go get those things. And we're going to hold space for our fear, right? Now, this is just emotional regulation techniques. You can be afraid You can be nervous, you can be anxious, you can be worried, you can be excited, you can be anything and still move your body. That is a fact. So when you allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling, then however you're feeling is irrelevant to you taking the action. I don't want to do this. Doesn't matter, right? That's where discipline comes in. But people who are disciplined, it's not that they have no emotions. It's that their emotions don't affect their ability to move their muscles and perform. They show up more often than not. Nobody has a hundred percent consistency, maybe like Dwayne Johnson. He's a fucking outlier. They show up much more often than not, no matter how they feel. Why? Because they're taking aligned action because they practice holding space for their emotions, but not being held captive by them. And along this journey, one of the things that we have to do while we're holding space for fear and anxiousness and excitement and getting our hopes up, right? I don't want to get my hopes up. They're already up. Just keep going is we're going to let go of the things that are not serving us. We're going to let go of our self-protective behaviors because we don't need them anymore because that life and this life are different. So growth is also a grieving process. You have to let go of the things that helped you in your past. You have to let go of the pain and trauma and whatever it is that you've experienced in order to move forward without carrying those things. Sometimes you have to let people go. You have to let jobs go. You have to let businesses go. You have to let clients go. You have to let family members go. Sometimes you have to, or at the very least for family members, change your dynamic with them, right? You are allowed to hold boundaries wherever you need them. But you are going to have to be comfortable with letting things go, especially those self-protective behaviors, because they're not actually serving you in the long run. They're only serving you in the immediate, immediate, immediate short term. But that is not the same thing as actually being long-term helpful. Like if every time you get upset, you're drinking, we have to let that go in order to grow. Because we have to learn how to sit with our emotions. If every time you meet someone who could be great, you're running away from them because you're scared. We have to let go of the running away. Because you want somebody to stay, which means you can't just up and leave for every little tiny thing. So we have to let go of the things that are no longer serving us, including your own protective behaviors that you developed because you didn't know another option, and they served you for some time. So it is okay that you have used them up until now. 
but they're not going to serve you going forward. So we have to find actual long-term helpful things that are going to work, which is why I strongly recommend working with a coach or a therapist because you need an expert guide, right? Now, ideally, they're not telling you exactly what to do step by step. They're teaching you how to think, how to think for yourself, how to problem solve, how to work out things that work for you. But you're only going to get to the end of your knowledge by yourself, which if you're listening to this episode is limited because everybody's is right. We only know what we know and we don't know what we don't know, which is why you hire an expert to get you to where you're wanting to be. So we'll go over them again, right? You have to one, know what you actually want and what you value. If we don't have an anchor for making decisions, then our decisions aren't consistent. They're not based in anything. That's a problem. You have to know what you're afraid of and how your behaviors are protecting you. If we know what we're running from or self-protecting from, that's probably something that you want. So we have to take aligned action despite that fear. And we have to hold space for the fear while we do it, right? The fear is not going to go away. It will eventually, once you do something enough times and you realize, oh, I'm not actually going to die from this. But we do have to hold space for the fear while we're taking action. Understand that your feelings don't actually impact your ability to do a thing because your muscles and your emotions are not connected. We're going to ask ourselves, what happens if it does work out? Instead of only focusing on the negative, like I want you to focus on the positive. What if it does work out? What if you do get everything that you want and dream of? What if it's better than you imagined? What if it is for you? What if those people aren't special? They just did the work. You can do the work. And we're going to have to let go of things that are not serving you along this journey. Now, you don't have to do that all at once. You're not like, everything in my life is toxic. We're getting rid of all of it. Like, (laughs) you don't have to do that. But along the journey, you are going to have to release things. So that that's the framework for getting out of self-protection mode that becomes self-sabotage. You deserve your dreams. You deserve the things on your heart, a happy, healthy, balanced relationship, a wonderful job or a thriving business, the family that you want, the house that you want, the life that you want. But you are never going to get it if you are running away from what you want because you're scared or because you don't know how to get there, right? Many, many, many people can help you get there, myself included, but you don't have to work with me. You can work with anybody who's going to help you. But we have to take action. We have to stop protecting ourselves from everything that we're afraid of because on the other side of that fear is freedom, is the life that you want, is joy. It's okay to be scared, right? I'm not saying fear is a problem, but being kidnapped by your fear is not very helpful. It doesn't help you get where you want to be. It just keeps you in a prison. So I would start with knowing yourself and your values, livemyhappyhealth.com slash get clarity. And if you are a business owner and you're listening to this and you're like, oh shit, (laughs) I could probably benefit from some coaching, just reach out. Um, More than happy to talk to you. I only do a couple people at a time. So that way you guys get my full attention and it is super fun. Um, So we're going to herd those cats. We're going to get you to stop drinking from a fire hose. It's going to be lovely. Um, You can get me on Instagram at Amanda underscore chill, C-H-I-L-S. Okay, friends. Go live your dream, which means we're going to have to work towards it, which means we're going to have to accept our fear and allow it to come along. Kind of like a little ducky that follows you around. It's just like quack, 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 quack. Like, it's okay. It's not going to get in your way. It's just going to follow you around and quack sometimes. It's totally fine. We just have a little duck pet now and we name it fear and it's okay. Um, If this resonated with you, please share it with a friend. Okay. Love you. Have a wonderful day.